Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and this next video is we're still kind of talking about the functional anatomy of the respiratory system, but this video is really going to focus on the lungs. So it's important to know that the lungs are going to occupy most of the thoracic cavity. Remember the thoracic cavity, if I'm going to draw a little picture, this that little area is going to be the diaphragm, but basically you're going to have the heart, so the muscle of the heart is going to be right here, but then you're going to have the right lung, I guess the left lung and the right lung kind of looks like a butterfly there, but it's basically going to take up the whole thoracic cavity. So the heart occupies the central part that's called the mediastinum, so media meaning that it's in the center, stinum comes from basically your sternum is right here, so your sternal bone is right there so it's the middle of your sternum is kind of what that's saying then the apex is near the clavicle which is the superior portion the base rests on the diaphragm so the base um, is kind of I didn't draw this very accurately but um, and then you have each lung that's divided by two lobes um, by fissures so you have the left lung which has two lobes and the right lung has three lobes and I'll show you a picture so that way you don't have to look at my terrible drawings so if you see this um, upper right lung, you see that you have a lobe right here, so that's lobe one, and then you have a lobe right here, which is lobe two, and then you have your third one right there, whereas the left lung only has two lobes, so it has one lung right there, and two, I guess, one lobe right there, and then the second right there. Um, they think that the reason that your your the lobes are different is because your heart is going to be situated a little bit towards the left side of your body, um, which decreases um, the space you have available on the left side. So that's sort of where we get that two and three lobe difference. I showed this diagram, but I wanted to put it in just because um, it really does a good job of showing how the pulmonary trunk extends its little uh, venules to end up having gas exchange, whereas these red ones are implying that they're oxygenated and then they're now bringing that blood back into the heart. Um, so make sure you always keep in mind that the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system really are working in, with very close detail with each other uh, in order for the whole cardiovascular system to work. So the major coverings of the lungs, um, you have the serose um, layer which covers the lungs. Um, in the outer surface of the lungs. So I try to give you a pretty good little diagram here. So the pulmonary or the visceral pleura covers the lung surface, whereas the parietal is going to line the walls of the thoracic cavity. The way that I usually remember this is I think that these are going to go in alphabetical order from the outside in. So if this was a lobe of your lung and this is your heart, Basically, I say from outside in, it goes in alphabetical order. So you have the parietal pleura because it's, it comes before the visceral. So the visceral is going to be here. So parietal comes before visceral alphabetically, so it's on the outside. Um, so the pleural fluid is going to fill the area between the layers of the pleura, which allow for gliding. Gliding meaning that as you breathe, your lungs are going to expand and contract. So that, that allows them to slide past. The two pleural layers are going to resist being pulled apart. That's probably a good thing. They're going to make sure that everything stays together as you're breathing. So the respiratory tree divisions, uh, these are basically the smallest part of the passageways um, that have reinforced uh, cartilage in their walls. So basically what's happening is you're going to have these, these extra reinforcements in a couple of different spots. So the primary bronchi, the secondary bronchi, the tertiary bronchi, the bronchioles, and then the terminal bronchioles. So basically, you have all of these little, I don't know, I think they kind of look like eggs, but these are the alveoli, and this is where the actual gas exchange occurs. So the gas exchange occurs at the alveoli, but it has to, in order for the oxygen to actually get there, it has to go through a bunch of different little branches. So if we start here with the bronchi, we have to go primary, then secondary, then tertiary, then we get to the bronchioles, then we get even smaller and smaller, and once they're really tiny, it'll be it'll look like this. So this is a really magnified picture of that. Um, just make sure you know that it has to the the oxygen really has to travel a pretty great distance in order to get to your lungs, or the oxygen in order for it to get into your lungs has to travel a really far distance. 
So the respiratory zone, there's a couple of different structures. You have the respiratory bronchioles, um, the alveolar ducts. Um, so the alveolar ducts are these structures right here. I guess I can't really draw them. They're a little bit hidden. They're kind of that orangey color that I'm trying to color them black. Then you have the alveolar sacs. These are the things that I said kind of look like eggs. They remind me of little eggs because um, that's where the oxygen ultimately will go. And then the alveoli are the actual air sacs that are inside there. And then the site of the gas exchange is in the alveoli only. So gas exchange occurs in the alveoli and basically you're going to have a whole bunch of oxygen in there and they're going to diffuse from high to low concentration out into the other areas which will enable your, your blood to become oxygenated. Okay, so the respiratory membrane and the air blood barrier. So the air blood barrier, basically you have a thin squamous epithelial layer that lines the alveolar walls. So remember a squamous layer, those are flattened cells. So this is a squamous cell right there. The alveolar pores are going to connect the neighboring air sacs. Basically the purpose of this is it's just making it so um, you have connect, they don't have to move as far basically. You have all these little structures that are connected together. The pulmonary capillaries cover the external surface of the alveoli. We want to have that there. That means that the oxygen won't have very far to travel to get to the pulmonary capillaries. Pulmonary capillaries is where the oxygen will ultimately go. Um, and then one side of the membrane is air and the other side is the blood flowing past. So as I'm not going to be able to draw this on this picture, but basically if you have an a whole bunch of little alveoli, those are the circles, and then blood is flowing this way, oxygen will diffuse across these membranes into the blood that's flowing past, and that's what will make those, um, those, that blood cell, or those blood cells being oxygenated again. And it looks like that wraps up the, the, or I guess the anatomy of the lungs, and I hope you found that helpful.